Hey everyone, this is Ryan and today we're going to look at restricting a deactivation button based on the ownership of a record or team membership and also a security role that has the ability to deactivate everything if the user has assigned it. This could be used across not only just buttons, but also you know, text fields, drop downs, pretty much any component that you have in your um, application. You will have the ability to restrict based off of you know, ownership, team membership, or even security role. First thing we're going to do is restrict the disable button here so that only the owner can disable the, um, the account record here. So not if it's a team, but only if it's a user. Okay, we'll add the team uh, logic after. So to do this, what you have to do is you need the users table here on the left. And once that's added, we'll go to our on start of the app. So if you go to your app, on start property, and if you expand the list here, what we're going to do is we're going to set a new variable. We're going to call it current user. And we're going to look up to the user table. And we're going to say this record dot user name equals user function dot email. So if you're using, you know, obviously, Dynamics or Power Apps, your user email is your user name, um, just Microsoft Active Directory authentication. So once we close that, and sorry, I need another bracket there, and then we'll have the current user. So if we click Run On Start, our user uh, global variable will be set. So now what we can do is if we go to our deactivation button here, you'll see that it's currently in edit mode. So pretty much any user that accesses this um, the screen here can press that deactivation button. But what we want to do is obviously restrict it just to the owner of the record. So to do that, what we can do is we will put an if condition that says, we want to find out if the type of the owner is a user. Okay, so is type, and we're going to say this item owner, and we're going to say users. We're going to reference the users table. So this will give us either a true or false. So if it's users, it's a user record, it will return true. And then what we want to do is add another if condition here. And we're going to say, we're going to cast this owner field, since we know it's a user, as a user record. So we're going to say this item.owner users. And then if we click, press the period here, now we have access to all the user table uh, columns. So this is where we can reference user. So this will bring in the GUID. You'll see that right here for the user record. And we can say equals current user. And then from here, we have this access to the same columns. We reference the user here, so the GUID. And then from here, we can say this is editable. So once it's in edit mode, we have to provide the complement, so display mode dot disabled. And then from here, we'll close our bracket. Now you'll see how we have is type equals users up here. So if it's false, we also need to disable the, the deactivate button in this situation for now, until we implement the team's logic. So if I go and enter in display mode dot disabled, and then we can close that bracket. So now you'll see, if I press play, that only the accounts that are owned by my user record appear with the deactivation button. So that's the exact logic that we want. Okay, so let's go take a look at implementing Teams. Now, this is 
similar. So what we have to do is go to our on start, but let's first take a look and make sure we have the right tables. So this is where teams has to be a table included. And then if you go to your on start, what we could do here is we will under where we grab our user. So let's just comment this down. So user retrieval. And we're going to add a new section for team retrieval. And to do this, what we will do is we bring in a collection. So we'll clear collect, we'll create a team list and we'll set it as blank. And then what we will do is at this point is we're going to do a for all. So we're going to loop through our user record and we're going to grab the current user. And then if I press the period here and I start to enter in team, if I scroll down, what you will find is the teams associations here. Okay, so that gives us all the teams that the user is a member of. So let's click on that and we'll cast this actually. So we'll cast it as team and just so that we can easily reference it. And then from here, what we're going to do is actually collect all the team IDs and bring them into the collection. So we're going to add to our team list and then from here we're going to say team ID equals team dot team. So the team here is actually the GUID. And then from here what we will do is close it up and then close our for all. So now if we run our on start we can take a look at our team list collection and actually see what it retrieved. So you see how I'm part of two teams here. So that's exactly what we want to see. So let's go back to our disabled, or sorry, our deactivation button. And then you'll see how we have is type equals users. So the complement of that would be teams. So an owner can only be a user or a team. So we can actually go into this disabled section here and we can put another if condition. So if what we could do here is then um, we can actually do a count rows. So what we're going to do is we're going to count our rows here. And what we're going to do is we're going to filter on our team list and we'll say this record dot team ID equals. And so what this is where we have to reference the owner of the account record. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in as type since we have to cast it as a team data type. And we'll say this item dot owner. And we'll enter in teams here. But this is where we can now reference the team GUID here. So this is where we need to bring this in. So if we close this up and we close this up, and then if we say if it's greater than zero, then it's enabled for us. So at this point, we're going to essentially copy the logic above here. So it's display mode dot edit. Otherwise it's display mode disabled. We'll close that up. And then if we go back to our app, you will see now that every um, account that's related to me as the user, the deactivation button is enabled and same with operations. But you'll see how I do not have the ability to deactivate for our owner Daisy Smith or management. So if I go to my operations table or my team, you'll see I'm listed here in the list. Whereas in the team management, I am not. That's where Daisy is located. So the last item that we want to cover is a security uh, role. Um, basically what we could do is not only for the user ownership or teams, 
We can also add in restrictions or you know expand on you know what a user can do based on the security role that they're part of. So right now what I have is a security role um, here called deactivate privilege. So with this security role, what we can do is we can actually, any user that's part of it will have full access to deactivate any record here in the app. So what we will do is we will go to our data sources here. So let's make sure security roles is added as a table. And then from here, we'll go to our app on start. And it's very similar to the team's logic that we have here. So what we will do is we'll grab all the security roles. So we'll clear, collect, security role list, we'll have as blank. And then from here, what we will do is do the same thing. We're going to go to the for all and security role list. Oh, sorry. What we want to do is go to the current user and we're going to grab the security. And if we go sc scroll down, you will see the security, this role system user roles association. So that's the, the um, relationship that we want to retrieve. And then we're going to say as role. And then from here, what we're going to do is collect. We're going to add our collection here. And then we're going to say role ID equals role dot. And it's actually going to be role. So this right here is the GUID for the security role. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind. It's, it's not security role, it's role. And then we're just gonna close this up, close it up. And then from here, we're going to click run on start. And then you will see if we go to our collections here, security role list, you'll see that I'm part of two, okay? But on purpose, you'll see that I'm not part of this deactivate privilege security role. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement the role, the, the restriction for the uh, deactivate button. See how I do not have access to it. And then we'll enable it, um, add myself to the role here. And then we'll see that we have access to it. So at this point, what we actually have to do is grab the GUID here at the top. So unfortunately, we can't grab the name of the security role. Um, like we could, but we'll just grab the GUID here. If you wanna do a, a re reference that collection table where you look up and have like the ID or sorry, the name instead, you could do that in your collection. But in this case, we're just gonna use the GUID in this situation. So what we want to do is if we go to our button here what we could do is at the top here is it's very similar to the team's logic that we put in place. So we're going to have to count the rows um, and basically say that if we're a part of the security role, then we'll be able to um, deactivate the buttons here, the accounts. So what we're going to do is we're going to do count rows and then this is where we're going to filter on our security role list. And we're going to say where this role, this record dot role ID. And we're going to say equals GUID. And we're going to paste in the GUID from before. Okay. So we'll go and close that up. And we want to say that it's greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, then we know we have full access to all the deactivate buttons in the list. So we're going to say display mode dot disabled. Otherwise, it will go through this logic. 
Okay, so we already have our else logic in place. And if no one, if a user does not match any of these, they will eventually end up here on the display mode disabled on this section here. Okay, so what we could do here is what we will do is go to our list and you'll see that, hey, I still do not have access to Daisy Smith or the management team's uh, records. I can't deactivate those. So what I can do is if I go to my, my uh, security role, I'm going to add myself to the team or sorry, the role here and click add. And then what I have to do is go to my users table here, just do a refresh. And then I will do a run on start. So previously I had two teams that I was part of. So if we go to our collections, I should have three. So if I go to my security role list here, you'll see that this is the GUID of that deactivation security role. And now if I go to my list here, you will see that I currently don't have access to it. So let's just take a look and see what's going on. So I entered in disabled instead where it should be enabled or sorry, edit. So that gives me full access. Okay. So you'll see now I have full access. And if I happen to do the same thing again, where let's say I remove myself from that security role. So we'll just go remove, refresh the users table. And we'll just refresh the security roles and we'll click the run on start. And then you'll see that those deactivation buttons are no longer available for me. So based on current user, team that the user is part of, or even security role, you can go through and your apps, go to the various components that you have on the screen. It doesn't have to be, you know, icons or anything like that. It could be, you know, modifying certain text fields that perhaps only certain users can, but you have that ability to build in the security logic into your screen so that users can only interact with the data that they're supposed to.